Welcome back to another before and after video. This time we're touring a main floor renovation. The entire floor is getting gutted and we're lucky enough to be here from the very start to film this. Special thanks to Kevin Walker from Lane Builds for putting all this together and CMD Studios for the design. So this is it. I'm gonna transition several times between the before and after throughout the video so that the renovation is easier to digest and appreciate. So this is the original front entrance, obviously. Uh, first impressions, it's kind of dark and it's super cramped. And it's only me and the cameraman right now. It's a very narrow space with extra squeaky floors that have seen better days. Look at the wear and tear on the stairs. This hallway seems to go on forever, but through here is the entrance into the living room combined with the dining room. This layout is very common in a home this age. So it's been about three months now since the start of the renovation and I just got a call from Kevin Walker. The renovation's complete and we're about to see this for the first time. I am super excited. This is an impressive transformation. It's hard to believe that this is even the same home because you immediately feel how bright it is and how much bigger the space is. It's hard to believe that all this work went into this home in just three months. Removing the wall that was here made such a big difference. So these particular clients, They've been thinking about this renovation for about 10 years. That's kind of typical. People spend a lot of time planning the renovation and how it's going to work. They want this wall out. They've been in the house for maybe ooh, actually 10 years, actually. They want this wall out. And the first question when you look at a wall like this in an old Toronto house is, is this a load-bearing wall? That's what everyone always asks and needs to know because obviously if you take out a load-bearing wall and you haven't done the proper diligence, uh, your house falls over. So the first question is, okay, load-bearing. How do we know if this is a load-bearing wall? The first thing you want to do is you want to go to the basement below the wall and see if there's any support columns. Typically in Toronto, the support columns I see are two by two bricks. They're usually squares. Uh, if you have that in your basement, you'll know what I'm talking about. Or you'll have maybe a wall in the basement. Sometimes you'll even have what looks to be a post there and it's, it's been drywalled and that's typically a steel post. You don't typically see that in older Toronto homes unless they've been renovated. So we go downstairs, we look in the basement, there's nothing there. This is not a load bearing wall. That said, I still don't believe it's not a load bearing wall because I want to make sure. So what we do next is we're going to strip this entire wall and then we're going to strip the ceiling and we're going to look up here and see if we have cantilever joists. If you have a joist running here and a joist running there and you have a wall underneath, that's a load bearing wall. What I'm suspecting is that we're going to have joists running all the way to the stair trimmer. So this is a load supporting wall, which means it helps support the joists up here, but they're not bearing on this wall solely. Once we figure that out, we're going to sister all of these joists to reinforce these existing, I think they're probably two by six trues, these existing joists from 100 years ago. We're going to reinforce the stairwell there with uh, uh, hangers. And once that's all done, then we take this wall out entirely. So first we strip it, leave the framing, strip the ceiling, leave all the joists obviously, reinforce everything, take the wall out, and you're done. Having seen Kevin Walker work, I'm very impressed with his ability to plan and schedule. Everything went off like clockwork. I'm super impressed with the seven inch bevel baseboard here. It's a really nice look with the high ceilings. I love these wide plank engineered hardwood as well. It's very modern right now. I don't think this table would have fit in the old dining room with the wall there previously. Let's move on to the kitchen now. It's accessed through the end of the hallway. I imagine it's not the easiest to prepare meals here because there's just not a lot of countertop space. 
and the fridge is all the way tucked into this corner where the plug is. This leads us into the mudroom. Uh, I believe there was also a home office at one time as well. And this is the original brick exterior wall of the home. That's why it's so thick. A lot of times you'll see an, an addition made to the home, but the brick is left here because it saves on the cost of the renovation. Removing this brick wall would be a major undertaking. Let me show you the new kitchen now. If you remember the old kitchen, there was no view into it from the dining room because this wall extended out to here. Well, it's now been reduced and the new kitchen is this galley kitchen with about double the amount of cabinetry space, a beautiful quartz countertop, I think double the amount of countertop space as well. And more importantly, the fridge actually fits into the space before, if you recall, it was just left in the corner. I love the details in the supply vent here. I love these pot fillers. They're so convenient if you cook regularly. I think once you live with a pot filler, you'll never go back to living without one. Remember that brick wall that used to be right here? So originally we thought this wall was a double brick wall, a load-bearing double brick wall, the same way the front of the house is a, is a double brick load-bearing wall. When we open it up, it's actually a wood-framed uh, wall, a uh, load-bearing, and then there's a veneer of brick on the front. So now we had to do two things. We had to support that brick veneer for the floor above and support the floor above uh, uh, with the wood frame structure. So the first thing that happens is the mason comes in. We punch strong boys in, which are basically um, these uh, beaks that go in and, uh, and support that upper brick. And then we put our lintel in, which is a massive lintel. It's a seven by four inch lintel. This is, it's a, it's a massive lintel. Uh, we load bear it on this side here, and then we load bear it on the other side. All the brick comes out and is disposed. That gives the carpentry boys enough space to drop in their double ply LVL here with our five two by fours to support that on one side. And then we double up with two more 2x4s here just to reinforce it and then the load bearing wall takes the other two LVLs. With that brick wall gone, you now get this seamless space from front to back and the light just carries all the way through. If you remember, there used to be a door here to walk in. Uh, that's been replaced with this custom window. And where there used to be a window is now this beautiful French door. I'm loving the tile here. There used to be a desk. Well now, it's a coat closet. And most importantly, a powder room on this floor. Wait till you see it. I'm super impressed with this renovation. I think because I was lucky enough to get in here from the very start before, before demolition. Um, I have Kevin Walker's contact details in the description along with CMB Studios. Uh, CMB Studios designed this space. Uh, if you're making a renovation yourself and you would like me to film it, I'd be more than happy to. Uh, please get in touch. And if you want more of these videos, subscribe. Thanks for watching.